Hey everybody, it's Joe. So I just read a comment online asking if anyone had good resources for spouses or significant others of those who have been sexually assaulted or sexually abused in the past. I think that's a really good question because that's a huge group of people. Being in a relationship with someone who has had that kind of abuse in the past does bring its own specific set of challenges. I've been married for two years now and my husband and I dated for three years before we got married. During that time, we worked through a lot of issues. I remember when I first started dating my now husband and I confided in my dad that being sexually assaulted did affect how dating was going and that it was really difficult. And his response to me was, oh, don't worry about it. A lot of girls don't want to have sex before they're married. And I thought, do people really think that the only way that this affects someone is sexually? That's that's a part of it, but for me, that was actually one of the smaller parts of it. It was really more mentally and relationally that I was damaged than it e even was about intimacy. I am so grateful that my husband was someone who understood that it took a lot of patience and a lot of understanding, a lot of listening. If you're in a relationship with someone who has been affected by sexual assault or abuse, what I would encourage you to understand is a couple different things. I know that there were times where I would freak out for no apparent reason, but there was a reason. And it would take a while for my now husband to calm me down and listen to what was really going on and listen to what that, that actual trigger was. Understand that there are triggers that you have no control over and really don't have anything to do with you. I think it's really hard to understand that sometimes because some of the things we do may come across as hurtful. For instance, when I'm making something in the kitchen and my husband comes up and gives me a hug from behind and I freak out, that might come across as rejection almost. Like I don't want to be touched, I don't want to be hugged by him. That's not what it is. It's because that touch when I'm not expecting it terrifies me. So where someone could interpret that as rejection, what it really is, is a trigger for post-traumatic stress disorder. So what I would really encourage you to understand if you're in a relationship with someone who has been traumatized is that you are in a relationship with someone who has been traumatized and please try to understand that there are triggers that are outside your control and they're not a comment on you, they are a comment on what your partner has been through. It is really important to be patient and to not put pressure on the other person. I'm not just talking about physically or sexually, I'm talking about mentally and relationally as well. Pressure is probably one of the things that across the board survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence and trauma in general have a really hard time with because it's a tool that abusers across the board use. Be patient with the healing process and please don't try to rush that because this takes a long time and you can help them and be there for them, but don't pressure them to heal faster than they are comfortable healing. It can be hard to be patient, and I totally understand that because I, I struggle with that too sometimes, but especially when you're in a relationship with someone who has been abused in these ways, know that that just kind of comes with the territory and being patient is the name of the game. I think another thing to understand is that this person is recovering, this person is healing. They are actively working through things and you can be a huge support. If you can be there to listen and just say, hey, I wanna understand what you're going through, talk to me. I believe you, I'm here for you, I'm not judging you. That can be one of the most incredible and healing things. It's really great that you're looking for ways that you can support your partner and that you can find support for yourself as well. Please take care of yourself, take care of the person that you're with and keep doing a great job. I'm Joe Beckwith, thank you so much for listening. If you're interested in more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you next time.